Well, I'm filming this myself. Kelly is buried in paperwork today. So before I talk about what I'm working on, just very quickly, this is a, uh, a little work of art on a panel and it's in a floater frame. Now holding the camera in one hand, I'm going to turn this over. So what you can see is you put the painting in the frame, you put shims to make sure it's nice and centered, and then you screw straight through into the structure that's on the back of the panel, and you have a floater frame. What I'm working on today presented a little bit of a challenge. This is the painting I'm working on today. Before we talk about framing, let's talk about what had to be done to get it restored. Carmichael's in Bedford did a remarkable job. First, someone had cut this out of the fr uh, frame that it was in. So I'm gonna come off the ladder and show you. So someone cut the painting right here, all the way around, leaving no canvas with which to stretch it. So Carmichael's added all this onto it so it could be stretched around this beautifully made strainer or stretcher. Our client was very adamant that they wanted to still see the rough edge of how it was cut out. So you can see what Carmichael's did was they left this rough edge. The client again wants to see all of that. And in order to see all of that, this has to go on a floater frame. So here's the problem. I'm going to turn the painting over and it will be right back. This is the back of the painting. Again, just beautifully done. This is on what's called a stretcher. These corners are not permanently attached. So over time, when things expand or contract, the canvas can sag a little bit. And under this acid-free foam core, there are these two little triangle-shaped keys in each corner that go into these slots. And if the canvas ever starts to sag, you tap on those, it pulls this apart just a little bit and tightens the canvas up. Well, here's the problem. If I just screw right into here, onto the back of a frame, you can't stretch these corners out. That would not work. So I've had to come up with something and I'm gonna show that to you next. Well, before I go on any farther, oh, I wanna add one more thing about the amazing restoration that Carmichael's did on this frame. Uh, sorry, on the uh, painting. At some point, the painting had been rolled up and that happened to it. It got squished. So when it was unrolled, there were these sharp vertical lines running every couple of inches all the way down the painting. Unbelievable how flat and perfect they got this. Okay, so now we understand we have to solve the problem of allowing the canvas to move a little bit if you want to tap those corners. So that's one problem that we've solved. And the other problem is pretty standard when you deal with the floater frame. You can see that this is a sample of the frame. And it's too deep. I need to raise this up a little bit. So now I'm going to show you the frame and what I've come up with. Okay, I'm up on the ladder again. Here is the frame. And you'll notice it has these little wooden blocks going around it. And let's take a closer look at those as I come off the ladder. First, this is not very nice pine. And so I've covered this with mylar just to protect the back of that canvas from this pine. Now, this block serves two purposes. One, it is a half inch high. So it's going to lift the painting up so it will line up nicely with the top of the frame. And the real thing here is look how big that hole is. A screw is going to go through that hole into the back of the stretcher. But the hole is much, much bigger than the screw. 
And what that means is that if you had to expand the canvas by tapping those corner keys, you could do it. All you'd have to do is loosen up these screws and the whole painting is now free to move a little bit. You could tap the corners and tighten it up. So this is really the only way that you can put a, you know, perfectly stretched canvas on a true stretcher into a floater frame and have the whole system still work. I think that's enough for now. And what we're going to do is show it to you when it is done. The painting is done. It's framed. And the main thing is we preserve this edge that our client really wanted to see. I think it looks absolutely beautiful in this Larson Jewel floater frame. I'm going to turn it around. We're going to take a look at the back. These are the blocks I showed earlier in the video. These have the very large holes in here that the screw goes through. You'll notice the canvas is folded under, beautifully neatly folded under here and tacked down. These screws do not go through the canvas. I think this looks great. I'm really thrilled with how it came out.